Hello everyone, welcome to my talk about MicroHH, our tool to simulate atmospheric turbulence. Here's here an example of what our tool can do. So we simulate the atmosphere at the highest possible detail levels. So this animation is made with the original C++ code. And we aim at um, domain sizes of about 10 to 100 kilometers, which is the typical scale, for instance, which clouds form, as you can see in the animation, with grid spacings of about 10 meter, which requires time steps of about a second. So, Recently, we've been trying to also port part of our code, so the dynamical core that solves all the flow equations to Julia. And the reason why we did that is that working with C++ is not always great. It has a very steep learning curve. So in particular, when you work with templated code like ours it, it, and the compiler errors, it can be very intimidating for, for students that start working with uh, the tool. And at the same time, interaction with the code is very difficult and also the integration with machine learning packages. So Julia has the promise to solve the problems that I just described because you can write nice and concise and effective code in a relatively quick speed. We can also apply machine learning directly in the code and it allows for interaction uh, through the REPL. So the first question that I would like to address is that does Julia now live up to its ambition that is stated in the, the famous blog post? So that post stated Julia is both simple and fast and in our experience in developing the Julia code, it's indeed relatively simple to work with. So it took only a relatively small amount of time to make a working code. At the same time, also making a fast code was a bit harder. So we had to work pretty hard in learning, let's say, about the details of loop factorization and how to use the inbounds and simt. And in the end, I mean, the effort was still very well doable. And to give you an overview of the speed that we achieved, so if you run a 256 cube simulation, which is relatively typical for student projects, like on my MacBook, MacBook Pro with two cores. In C++ it takes about 1.92 seconds per step. While in Julia it takes about 2.60 seconds per step if we did our first kind of implementation with inbounds and simt. But thanks to the magic of loop factorization, we managed to make a code that was considerably faster, let's say just on two cores than the original C++ code. So that was quite a, a nice result. Then to make the parallel code, because of course we want to do big simulations on, on, on supercomputers. So we work with MPI.gl to do the distributed part of the programming and we use threaded loops in loop factorization. And in that way, we kind of managed to make um, a nice hybrid uh, parallel code. So while our original code was object oriented in design, we now rely on multiple dispatch to select the proper functions. So the user, for instance, generates at runtime, let's say a parallel uh, data structure that decides whether the code is run with um, serial or distributed um, parallelization. And depending on that, it picks, for instance, as you see on the code on the right, a transpose function. So what the result gives us then is that um, we get a pretty compact code in that way, which I think is very well readable. And to give you an example with the code on the right, so if we take the second function, what it does basically is it kind of packs information to be sent over um, the message passing interface. It does the communication and in the end it unloads the data again. And thanks to the nice and concise um, array notation of Julia, plus the, the, the very good implementation of the message passing interface, um, we managed to do that in, I think, very well readable code. Also, um, the IO of the code became a lot easier with uh, the HGF5 plus MPI.gl package combined, which allowed us to do the parallel writing directly into HGF5 files. Also the scaling of our code. So here we kind of see some results of a strong scaling experiment where we put, let's say, a very large problem and we keep on adding more and more cores to it to solve it. And a weak scaling where we have a fixed amount of workload per processor and we keep on expanding the problem size. So we did all these experiments on the Surf Snellius machine. So Surf is from the Dutch research infrastructure. And you can see that both the, the weak scaling and the strong scaling have a pretty good scaling over um, a quite range of, uh, of, of cores that are assigned to the problem. And even in, if you took the weak scaling, we managed to get over two orders of magnitude and still get uh, a decent scaling of 55% over the whole range. 
So one of the nice things of Julia that I um, discovered while developing the code was the macro language. And we use that, um, and what I want to show in this slide is this FD macro, and we use that to discretize our partial differential equations on what we call a staggered grid. So staggering means that if we have variables like temperature or humidity, we put them in the center of the cell, while the velocity components are on the edges. And what we can do then is that we can um, write our, let's say, the gradients that we take or interpolations that we do in some sort of macro language, as you can see with these grads and interps in the code above. And we let the macro write this into um, the actual code, which contains a lot of um, indices and interpolations. And you can see that looks as following. And in that way, we could prevent ourselves to, to make um, a lot of mistakes and we could write much more readable code. And to add to that, I mean, we can do similar things with C++ expression templates, but this was really a lot easier for us. Then also the interaction with a running simulation was very nice in Julia. So here you see, for instance, a script on the right that we would give to a student and to work with it. And this is all they need to see. So it can load kind of the settings of the model. Then it initializes a model object that contains all the um, settings of the model and the solvers. It can load the data then, so we, we can save a state of the atmosphere of how at that moment the turbulence looks to disk. We can load it, and then the student can start a simulation. And each time it calls a step model function, it goes one step further. Then in this, this while loop that we show here, you can do all kinds of different things that are interesting. So you can do, for instance, interactive plotting, or you can stop the model and make some plots of the actual state. You can calculate statistics and you can manipulate the model state also there. So let, for instance, let's make it two degrees warmer and see what happens. One thing that we did encounter, if you work in such a way that um, if you start a new session and you want to work with the REPL there, that each time you do that for the first time, it took about 120 seconds to compile the code and get it running. And I mean, you only have to do this once, but I noticed that it can be quite, uh, I mean, it can take quite long, and that was mainly due to loop to factorization. The last thing that I want to say is that the experience with the Julia plugin was okay, but also in Visual Studio, but it was also often quite, quite laggy. And I sometimes also have to say that I missed working with C-Line and PyCharm, how we do it, let's say, with the original code. That brings you to the conclusion. So indeed we encountered um, Julia is easy and fast. So I think it's a great new tool for us for student projects and simple problems. It comes with a lot of great packages and the interactivity is great. All right, thank you all for listening.